The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the raw and uncensored Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, the original HBIC, Katie Boyd. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. (laughs) <laughs> and over here is my ventriloquist dummy, <laughs> Matthew. Oh, I supposed like to do way, it. I like what that. I like what that hand Matthew, is. Matthew, do the mouth. Matthew, Martin, Babine. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, Jesus yeah. Christmas. Put your hand back up my butt again. And make, <laughs> oh my. make my butt move. My my mouth move again. <laughs> Put your hand on my ass and make my mouth move. <laughs> well, is that what the you have to stick it up yeah. in the back? But that's like, like I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm a real boy, uh, and I will always tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, As my Pinoke. nose is growing. Okay, Pinot. <laughs> Oh, Matt. Just, can on? we just get through this damn thing? Oh, I don't want to get through it. I'm going to make it happen. I don't get <laughs> oh, through anything. I Matt, do everything with definite. Matt makes nothing happen because he doesn't do anything to make this happen. Well, he just I'm, shows I, up I, here. I'm here, and a lot of the, 99% of the time is uh, showing up is key. <laughs> okay. That's key. You got to show what up. What is the other right? 1% all about? Have Katie write it. <laughs> <laughs> God. The truth comes out of Pinocchio. Oh, oh my Lord. Move it on. Yeah, move it on up. To the, to the east side. Uh, I want to always really, really spotlight my people who do what I say. Uh-huh. They listen to the HBIC. They go on iTunes. They leave a rock and review, five stars, written. They take time out of their busy ass days. But let's be honest, most of you guys aren't busy. You're watching motherfucking Maury Povich all day eating flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> I don't think he's on anymore. Yes, he is. What do you mean, Maury is Povich Mar- isn't Mar- on? Maury Povich is still on. Absolutely. TV. I don't so know. is Phil Donahue. Phil and Donahue. Sally Jesse Raphael. Oh, God. And Geraldo. And Dinah. Who's Dinah? Dinah? That's a long time ago. Who's Dinah, man? Who's Griffin? <laughs> Di- that, that would be Dinah Shore. Di- oh, I know Dinah, Dinah Shore. Shore. Yes. She had a show? Yes, yeah. big time. Jeez Louise. I usually watch Catch It Right After Carson. <laughs> Oh, my God. All these people. You guys are dating yourselves. Yes, I dated myself. It was all good stuff, though. Everyone loved You're going to end up dating yourself again if you don't shut the fuck up and I, let me read this damn review. It's Johnny. It's <laughs> Johnny. All right, listen. Five-star <laughs> review over here. It's from Me3, and she says, or he says, who knows who it is? I mean, it doesn't. it could be a fairy for all I fucking know. I can't say enough of good things about this podcast. It's just good, solid content. Funny, smart, thought-provoking, and inspiring. Katie and Matt are simply the best. Oh, simply the best. You love that shit. I love that song, Tina Turner. <sighs> Better than Thank all you. the rest. Thank you for inspiring me to be the best version of myself and pointing me in the direction of inspiring others to do the same. Love you both. Aww. Me three, email me at themisfitclub at gmail.com to receive your $100 gift certificate to use towards anything <clears throat> KBMFC related. And if you are a lazy bitch and you haven't gone on to iTunes yet, What the hell are you waiting for? (laughs) Get over there. Don't you understand that I live for this shit and I'll read it and I'll touch myself lightly after thinking about it. Put you you down there. there. We're just singing that song. I don't even know what song it is, but I know it's a techno song. I just can't put my finger on it. We'll figure it out by the end of this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) God, help me. We'll sing the whole rendition. Uh, And I also like to talk about my beautiful sponsor, Ayana, over at Prana Lash Hair Skin. If you go over and you talk to her about your eyebrows, she's going to give you a $100 gift certificate to use towards your first microblading. Email her. She's amazing. She saved my life. Now I don't have to put as much makeup on <laughs> every day. She saved your life. Dude, she did. Eyebrows she are did. life. It's a lot of work. You ever work. see these bitches that have those Pam Anderson eyebrows still from like Baywatch circa 1998? <laughs> I wasn't in Baywatch. I wasn't paying attention to anybody's uh, eyebrows. Over- I was just waiting for the running scene. Oh. Ew. Ew. They're running on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those eyebrows. 
<laughs> Matt loves David Hasselhoff oh, when he runs. He I loves do. his junk bounces around in those little David red Hasselhoff. shorts. Well, he was big in Germany for his music. Don't hassle the Hoff, Matt. Don't hassle the Hoff. Oh, my. Yeah, but they used to overpluck their eyebrows to Holy Kingdom Come. I did not know that. And now we're all like living in rehab for our eyebrows. <laughs> like they won't grow in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like the hair on the top of your fucking head <laughs> that has all migrated that to ship, your back. That ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. It really, really, With really Baywatch. has. No shit, right? right? With Baywatch. Uh, oh. So today... Now that we've stopped all of our shenanigans, <laughs> is all about leveling up like a bitch. Level it up. What does this mean, Matt? Level to level Depends. up. There's a lot of different ways to level up. There's yeah. Level up in your business. Is level up spiritually. I think we're going to focus on. Level well, today up we're going to be just talking mentally. about spiritually leveling up. Okay, that's why. Because thought. I think the spiritual leveling up really helps all the other parts of your life. Yeah, I guess the spirit is you, right? And yep. whatever you touch is. Let me what ask it does. you a question before we start. In yes. all the books you've ever read, all the seminars you've ever attended, all of the like the big Tony Robbins thing, all everything. Yes. Has anyone ever told you that when you spiritually level up, it was going to be the most tumultuous, most difficult, scariest, hardest thing you've ever gone through in your life? Go. No. Why? I don't know. I don't They're know. Bull- Why mean- don't people? Why don't people tell you this shit? You know, it's 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 crazy. I mean, you know that's going to be some bumps or whatever, but you never know Do you really? really. I don't think that people think that there's going to be bumps. I really in my heart think that people think I'm going to start meditating, <sighs> I'm going to start going to the next level, I'm going to be all this all this beauty and light and love. Yeah, yeah. Namaste. <laughs> Satnam. It's, not, it's Satnam. not like that at all. It's, it's the fucking opposite. No. It's literally like being the Matrix. Uh-huh. It's like the Matrix. You take that pill of meditation or trying to, you know, to go into the next level spiritually, and you are going to, you know, wake some stuff up within you. Wake some stuff up. Oh yeah, you're gonna feel like you were going through the friggin' worst war in your whole entire life. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Yeah. Yes. And there's yeah. times too that you know people will come to me that I coach, and they'll say like. Katie, it's just so hard. I'm like, bitch, I warned you. I told you from day one. And I think I'm the only one that I know that does this work that pre-warns people. Yes. Because as a coach and a mentor and a motivator, I also don't want to take on people. And, you know, I I attract my ideal people. But like years ago when I first started doing this work, I would have all these like wahoos coming out of the woodwork being like, I want to learn how to meditate and change my life. And then I would start teaching them. And then what happened? Mm. They hated me right. after because right. they were like, you, you, this is awful. This is like ruined my whole life. Like I can't tell you how many people that I've coached that ended up getting divorced. Mm-hmm. They ended up leaving their jobs. They ended up moving to a different part of the world or, right. or then like excommunicating their friends that they've had for 20 years or not speaking to their family members anymore. And I'm like, I fucking told you this from day one. Right. I always pre warned That's actually my awesome because I never was I never was told. But I knew to go to the next level in my life, my business, because I was uh, what do you call it? When I first started my journey it was a very superficial journey. Yes. I was learning to, you know, grow a business and make money and 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 So you uh, pretty much did everything. Like when you did Tony Robbins, for instance, yeah. you went because you're like, Oh, I'm gonna learn like how to take my business to the next level and right. be wealthier and, and all this stuff. And that's when I went to <laughs> see, Jokes on you must see him because he was a huge Trojan horse, right? Because yes. he's like, Oh, I'll get him in to do this. But it's really like, Oh, did you remember that you're your business? And you're the person that's driving the business. And, and your energy go, is your business. You have to go in deep to fix the things to go to the next level. And I'm like, uh, I didn't sign up for this. Wait a second. I didn't sign up for doing all of this hard right. work, inside work. And it was kind of, that was when I was woken woken up. Yeah. And then I, you know, I never left the same after that. And then I was like, wow, there was so much that I have not been paying attention to. And it was scary stuff that I didn't want to look at. No. And, but you know something that was scary that I didn't want to look at? But on the other hand, it was like, you know something? I have to. I have no because choice. Because I was ready. And I was like, you know something? I need to stop pulling all this stuff out so I can take a look and see yeah. who I really am. And there's days too, like, and I'm very spiritually evolved, at least in my opinion. And there's days where I wake up and I'm like, dude, it would just be so much easier to go back to sleep, mm. to not be on this spiritual path. Yeah. So the reason why we're doing this in Bitches Podcast today, it's not to scare any of you, but it's to help each and every one of you and bitches out there that are doing your work to realize that all the things that I'm about to tell you and talk about, they are normal and this too shall pass <laughs> if you stick yeah. with the journey. Right. Right. And there'll be maybe something new that will come up though too. Yeah. As you level up. 
Yeah. So does that. Different level, different devil. You got it. Right? So I want to give you signs and symptoms of leveling up like a batch. <laughs> How's that sound? Sounds great. And obviously, Matt will, can put in his two cents. Yes. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Are you snoring on my two cents? Go, <laughs> I was just kind of like, you oh, know. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. All right. Words of wisdom for Matt Baybine. Go yeah. ahead. Just start us going. <laughs> Fuzzy moments by Jack Handy. <laughs> I love Jack Andy. Remember Jack That's Andy? Yeah, oh. All right. So here are some symptoms and signs. So during your time of leveling up, so once you've adopted the spiritual lifestyle and you're like, I'm going to go to the next level, I'm going to open my heart, I'm going to evolve on this three-dimensional earth plane into higher dimensions of consciousness and all these different things. I was never that precise. Well, they're really precise. You have I love to be. that. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying now, but I was like thinking back of my my beginning of leveling yes. up. Right, that was right. really nice. I no, like you were that. just like, I'm going to meditate and I'm going to spank my monkey. <laughs> That's usually what. I'm, yes. That's how it ends. Okay. Touch me there. Okay. <laughs> you may always feel this faint underlying tone of something changing, evolving, or happening that you cannot quite put your finger on. So for me, like my clients will say to me, Katie, like I'll get these texts all the time, like, what's going on with the moon? Like, is something in retrograde? What is happening? Uh, all this shit. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, yeah, the moon, the fucking planets, the stars, the comet, all the shit. Yeah, it's all happening. But truthfully, you're hyper aware and hyper conscious of what's happening happening in higher dimensions of reality than just the third dimension. Does this make sense or am I talking friggin' some other language right now? Makes sense. You do. No, you understand it. Yes, yes. So if we're in this three-dimensional reality, like, you know, we're all here physically, mm-hmm. when you expand your consciousness to fourth, fifth, sixth, and higher dimensions of reality, you start to realize like that we're all connected, mm-hmm. that everything is the butterfly effect. And we're all connected in what we call in the spiritual realm, the Akasha. So the Akasha is anything that's ever happened since like the Big Bang to now. And it's Mm -hmm. all stored in these higher levels of consciousness. Right. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So you might always feel like kind of funky, like, is something in retrograde? No, it's just you leveling up. So if you're feeling that, this is normal 110%. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Here is one of the things that I've dealt with. Matt never deals with this, but I deal with it all the time. Increased energy. <laughs> Why don't I deal with that? Because you're fucking lazy and oh. you're just a slumping dink and lumping a log. <laughs> like I'm up in the morning and Matt gets up. He's like, wow, the house is clean. You've written like a whole chapter of your book. You made the coffee. coffee's made. <laughs> and Matt's just working the sleep out of his eyes, right? <laughs> so what happens sometimes is when you're leveling up, you become almost like the energizer bunny. Like you wake up at like 3 a.m. and you're like... <gasps> I got to get up. Mm-hmm. I feel so energetic. Yeah. Huh. yeah no, Matt, I've never <laughs> felt that. <laughs> I was just thinking, no, uh, it wasn't me. So if you feel like, I mean, obviously I'm not saying that you're a lump on a log too, but what I'm saying is like, you're like way off on, off your baseline of like what your normal feelings of everyday life is, right? You almost feel like this like manic, like mm. crawl the walls feeling. And that's mm. another part of ascension. It's the part of going to the next level. Um, this is kind of, um, you know, TMI, but we are the ambitious podcast and we make shit jokes all the time and fart jokes, but sometimes you may shit your pants. This is a real thing, right? You get <laughs> I this. I haven't. I'm not saying this one. That's never happened Matt's to me. never shit his pants. Um, okay. Not unless I had a flu. <laughs> You're having you're having <laughs> spiritual flu. Yeah, that was probably a spiritual flu. That was a spiritual flu. Come to think of it, fuck right? you, Matt. See, this okay, is okay. Yeah, Get right. on board with that what's was. happening. Okay, right I'm now. listening. I'm listening. Go, okay. go. Like the time. Sometimes that you- I learn from you, so I just listen like Sometimes. everybody else too. Oh my, and the word. Okay, so I'll give you an example. One time, Matt was healing with this uh, woman that we used to work with, and he came home that night. and He's like. I feel so funny. Like after his, your healing session, right? Yeah, funny. That's when I, I gave you the cup of my, cheese. My mouth was out to here. I had this. Ju- oh, that was a different time. That was a different time. Oh, Matt kept getting these like sw- um, blocked salivary duct glands. Yes. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your stomach shit. Okay, my stomach shit. Yeah. So one time he did a healing with this woman and he came home and he was like fine. Like we were watching a movie. We had like dinner. Everything was fine. And all of a sudden he st- like turned green and was like, I think I'm going to be sick. And I thought he was fucking around. So I farted in my hand and I gave him a cup of cheese, which made him <laughs> projectile, projectile vomit. vomit. 
Yeah, not good. <laughs> Ask my daughter. So Karina's there, and she's like, what the hell are these idiots? Well, she she's- had a bag, and you were throwing <laughs> up into it, and then she threw up into the bag, too, because it made her oh, throw up. It was disgusting. So what I'm All saying is- you. Yeah, hello. I just saw 444 on our time ticker, too. So. <laughs> so sometimes when you're doing this spiritual work, you're unlocking- all of your base chakras. So you're unlocking your chakras from your root, your sacral up into your solar plexus. So a lot of people, when they're going through their spiritual awakening, will have like nausea, flu-like symptoms, diarrhea, all those things. In Matt's case, cup of cheese syndrome. (laughs) That was an awful cup of cheese. (laughs) I Don't remember, worry, he got me back one time. I remember time. when I first really started doing my stuff and I knew that you know things had changed yeah. because a lot of the people that I used to, like I started doing meditation, I was doing a lot of uh, personal development, mm-hmm. I was really, really diving deep into my work Yes, because I really have, you know, if I do something, I'm in 150%. Right. And then it's, I knew it was a journey. But then all of a sudden I noticed I started shedding people, number one, people like, you know, uh, that I would be friends with and they they, they didn't jive with me yes. anymore or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. So those are the things that I really noticed but first, like the real uh, three-dimensional stuff. Yes. People were like, well, how come you want to do this meditation? How come you want to do that? Or how come you're looking for all these answers? Just, you mm-hmm. know, let's just go out and have a beer or whatever the case may be. And it's like, you know, if I'm not talking to you about something that's deep or I want to be around you or talk about something that we're going to actually – both learn from. Yes. I don't want to kind of do those things anymore. BTW to everybody out there that's listening. If you ever meet me or Matt in person, don't ever step to us with small talk because we will just, well, I will walk away from you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll go deep. I'll go, you know, I'll ask them a question like, you know, what do you, what's your greatest fear? Right. What are you working on inside? Like, I don't want to be like, oh, it's like raining. Like, who gives a fuck it's raining? Everyone like, who cares? Yeah. Why do people do that? Because <laughs> it's, it's like safe. I don't know what else to It's do, safe. You know? Right? Yeah. So annoying. Well, thank you for sharing that, Matt. Yeah. I really appreciate. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it um, this is going to freak Matt out, but I'm just going to say it. When you're leveling up, and if you're out there right now and you're going, "Oh my God, this is what it is," sometimes you can see your vision will change. So when I started doing a lot of spiritual work all of a sudden I would be like in my meditation and I would like open my eyes and like things would go by my eyes like really fast on the side, like almost like shadows Mm. or like you might see like floaters or orbs or even sometimes like now I can look at inanimate objects and I can see the energy vibrational frequency running through it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, it's kind of strange, right? But I think it's really just becoming hyper-conscious and hyper-aware. I really do believe that we all have these powers, but no one knows how to tap into them. Yes. I like agree. people will, you know, my good friend Maureen Hancock is a is a medium. Mm-hmm. And she'll say to you, You all have this power, but you've shut it off or you're scared of it, so then you can't connect with that other dimensional reality. Or you had something when you were a kid and your parents were like, Oh, come on, you don't see anything. There's nothing over there. Just don't do that or to your children. Whatever. Please you know, don't do and, that to your children. Uh, or my, Karina used to see when my uh, daughter used to see you know, all sorts of colors when she was a child. Yeah. And I'd be like, what are Didn't you talking about? Didn't she used to about? see a little, a guy in the bathroom too? Yeah, yeah, she would see somebody, she'd go, dad, there was this guy in the bathroom who came and said, yeah, you go downstairs now to your mama or whatever. And I'm like- Oh, I just got chills. Right? I was like, whew, that's weird. You know, so- But when she was younger when and you weren't younger, woke yet, I you probably woke. were like, okay, Karina, that was cute. Like yeah. moving on. <laughs> I was but, like, oh, I'm looking around going, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> what guy's in the house? What's she talking about? You know? But now if you I'm had a child spooked. and the child says something like that to you, you'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's totally normal. Probably true. Yeah, it's You would true. like encourage it. Yes. Right. Yes. So if you're out there in a bitch's land and your children are coming and saying that they're seeing things, don't quell that. And I'm not saying that you have to like make them the next friggin' uh, medium next door. <laughs> right. But right. don't tamp their spirit down because they are, children are trailing the breath of the angels. They're just coming into this world with this open consciousness. And we as the adults, we push that away in them and then they don't step into their full divine beingness. I mean, even we push the, sometimes intuition down, the gut instinct. Oh, my oh, God. I don't like that person. Don't judge a book by its cover. I don't like that person. Oh, go, oh, he's fine. Or whatever the case may be. Ah, that person may not be fine. Oh, how come you get sick every time Aunt Mary comes over? Oh, I don't know. Maybe she's, you know, dragging the seven ghosts with her. Hello. I mean, who the heck knows what's going on with these people, what kids see and we don't see. Right. Or what they feel. Yes. And we need to be able to give them permission to feel their true feelings mm-hmm. and then be like, understand it and say, you know, hey, this is okay that Absolutely. you feel this way. And I want you to always tell me if you feel certain ways, yes. right? So if you're going through Stranger Things type of shit at home, stranger it's because it's you're leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> if you go in the upside down with 11, yeah. you're, probably in the, you're probably leveling up spiritually. 
The next thing that happens when you're going through this spiritual evolution is changes in your diet. So like food that you loved your whole life might disgust you Mm -hmm. or things that you never liked, you might want to eat. For me, um, when I started on my spiritual journey, I became vegan and it wasn't because I was doing it for health reasons because when I was vegan, it actually made me gain 60 pounds because my body just did not like that way of eating. Um, For me, it was like I just felt so connected to animals and little beings and I just was like, who am I to like take their lives and eat them? Mm -hmm. Now I obviously know that my body physically cannot be as high performance as I want it to be when I'm just eating vegetables. Yes. So for me now, what I do is when I do eat meat, before I eat, I actually do a prayer inside of myself and I thank the being that I'm eating, whether it's you know piece of chicken or fish or beef right. or whatever, I thank it for giving its life to nourish my body. That's awesome. So I intentionally, every time I eat, I in- you never know because I house some food like a motherfucker, but before I house <laughs> that food, I, I really you know give thanks to it. It's right. in being intentional, really. Absolutely. Did you have anything like that when you were... Yeah, you know, we just really craved Tito's vodka more. I probably no. I actually, <laughs> when I did start doing my spiritual work, I really because I was a martial artist and I was always on the outside. Mm-hmm. I was an outside of martial arts, the kicking, the punching, all of that great stuff. Yes. The body, the lifting, the you know, compete the competition level of getting strong outside. Right. I went the opposite, and I just said, you know, something. I'm so thrilled about going inside yeah. and learning about inside it happens more. Than the outside. So again, did I gain weight and I started not thinking about the outside as much. And I was really on that probably for about a good year or two when I first really yeah. woke up and started really examining all the stuff. Almost like um, um, just I was just always trying to figure stuff out inside. inside. Yes. It's almost like when Neil Donald Walsh in Conversations with God says like you start to not care about your physical reality. I didn't care anything about outside. It was all the stuff that I was working on inside. Yeah. And it was kind of crazy. And uh, But then afterwards, I think I had my ritual. Well, then the Richard pendulum Grant can swing back. A moment where I, I started to swing back. Yeah. I started, you know. So if that's what's happening to you, if you're like, I just want to be in meditation and I just want to live in this like, you know, bubble of spirituality, that is normal and you will get back to normal, whatever the fuck normal means. Yeah, whatever normal is, right? And then this is a huge one for me that, that happens a lot. I know you have it a lot, but I really have it like a lot to the point where it's like deafening is like deja vu. Mm. Have you guys ever experienced deja vu? Like you're almost like, whoa, I've been here before in another lifetime or something. That is 100% leveling up spiritually. So when you have deja vu, I think what deja vu in my opinion, this is just my opinion. I'm not the, the scientist of deja vu. But for me, what deja vu means is it's a reminder to say you are right where you need to be at this very moment on the on the right path. Yep. So it's absolutely. like a like a check yourself moment. Mm-hmm. Like oh, I'm having deja vu. That this means I'm aligned and I'm resonating with my divine power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you I have agree. deja vu sometimes too. All the time. All the time. This is um this is another thing that happens a lot, and I I know all you guys are like oh my god, it's been happening to me too. You see synchronistic numbers all the time, so you see like eleven eleven four 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 five 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 three three three, or you can even see numbers that mean something to you like certain birth dates and things like that. Nice. Like Maureen Hancock will always say to me, um, she always finds pennies with a certain date of like when someone passed away that was close to her. Wow. Like she'll pick a penny up and it will always be like 1984. Wow. Like what's the, right. what's the chances of finding a penny all the time with the 1984 on it? That's crazy. You know what yeah, I mean? That's not coincidence. So yeah. for me, the synchronistic numbers are how, because you have to understand, we all have power posses. We all have guides and guardians and angels around us. I don't care what you believe, but it's true. There is higher powers and people, not people, but beings guiding you, helping you go to the next level. Mm-hmm. They're in different dimensional realities. So they cannot, co- they cannot communicate with us like we communicate. Right. You know, They have to communicate with us in different ways because they're so high vibrational. They can communicate with you through these numbers. Mm-hmm. So this is Absolutely. like when you see your numbers, just know like you're being, you're being watched and you're being divinely guided. I see 444 four, four, all the time. Time. Yes, and actually, I see it so much that I, there may be a lawsuit with, between Jay Z and, and I, you uh, with the four 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 album. Yes, because uh, I don't know why he's taking my four four four. Poor Jay Z. I love Jay Z, so I'll, <laughs> I'll let him have it. I don't think I can beat him. Spiritual <laughs> shit really works. I let it go. The spiritual, sh- as Jay Z said, the spiritual <laughs> shit really works. Um, there's a couple other things too that when you're on your spiritual level up that happens to you. Some people um, get clear audience. So clear audience can be a couple different things. So for me, when I was um, 
attuning to my spiritual awakening, I would get these deafening ringing in my mm, ear. So yeah, like all too. of a sudden you're just having a conversation and all of a sudden it's like, Bing! That would happen to me all the time when I went to sleep. Just before going to sleep, yes. I would be like, just about to fall asleep. And it'd be, yes. I'd, hear, I'd hear that ringing. And sometimes it will happen in like the right or the left. Once you keep doing this for a really long time, you'll start to notice that the right means something and the left ear ringing means something else, a different like different guides mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. to you. And then the other thing is too is is um, when you can smell things. Have you guys like out there ever like you're like in your room and all of a sudden you're like, I smell I smell a pipe. Mm. Or for me, I always smell. Um, and I hate this smell, but it reminds me of my grandmother, black strap molasses, huh. black strap molasses. Huh. Because when, you know, I always said to my grandmother, cause she was, she had pancreatic cancer for 18 months before she passed away. And I used to visit her every weekend at her house. And I would say, and she would, we would have talks about death. And I would say to her, when you go, how are you going to tell me you're here? Mm. And she would tell me, I'm going to tell you. You were, woke, you were woke back then. But I didn't know I was question. woke. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, when That's you're watching deep. your grandmother die for 18 months, you start to be like, you know, this is inevitable. Like, but I want to, how are you going to communicate with me when you're not, when your physical body's not here anymore? And she would tell me. And one of the things was when I was a little girl, we would bake gingerbread cookies together mm. and I hated the smell of black strap molasses. So when she'd put the molasses in, I would, I would gag and I'd have to like go in the other <laughs> room and she thought it was so funny. <laughs> so every awesome. so often I'll be in my meditation and I'll smell that smell. Uh. And I'm like, where is this coming from? But it's not a coincidence, guys. It's how your guardians and your guides and your ancestors and your loved ones are, who are no longer on this earth plan, this is how they communicate with you. So don't act like it's coincidence. Mm. It's not, right? That's awesome. You love that. Jay-Z Memories. Quote. What? Black, what was it? Black um, mosh. What was it? What was, this, what was the smell? I never Black had. strap molasses. You know what that's for? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in that's the fucking me- balls That's for right your memory. Now. Okay. That's for your memory. All right, Matt. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even stand, stand I know you. you do. That was the best one. Um, what else? Oh, this one. This one is so time being skewed. Oh. So either your time gets so fast or it slows down. Yes. That's also parts of spiritual awakening. So don't try to just get through every week of your life and be like, if I just get can get through this weekend, I'll be fine. And I can just get through this thing, I'll be fine. <sighs> That is hurrying your life up. Slow it down to a point where it's not so slow that you feel like you're like a dolly clock, like melting in the desert, but not so fast that you feel like, you know, you can't ca- catch up to it. You talk That's about skew time all the time. time all the time. It's like, you know, I go, I can't believe, I was teaching karate the other night and it was like, I did t- two classes in kickbox. I'm like, where did the time go? Right. And I go, I even asked, that same, I was like, what? How quick did these classes go by? It yep. seemed like we just started, yeah. and it was like, bam, it right. was just over. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it will be, you know, slower yeah. or, or whatever. Absolutely. But uh, and, and he, I'll say something to you. I'll go. Remember what we did yesterday, and you're like, babe, that was this morning. <laughs> I go, no, that had to be a couple of days. You get skewed. Yeah, skewed absolutely. Time. Yeah, totally. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. It's what happens when you time travel? I guess. Are you whatever you're doing when you meditate? All right, you're a time traveler now. Yeah, probably. Fuck off. All right. I'm joking about the a time. D- now, but that's a joke, people. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm I, like, the guys with the butterfly nets will be over here. All right, Mr. Time all right, come back. Let's put you in your happy place in your padded room. <laughs> a deep longing to go home, even if you don't know where home is. And I talk to you about this all the time. Like, when I was a little girl, I would like look up into the stars and be like, when are my real family coming to get me? Mm. Or like a homesick feeling. Yeah. And when I met you, is when my homesick feeling went away, which is how I knew you were the person. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay, nice. don't get all sm- smoochy nice. smoochy. I'm being serious. Oh, Do you ever feel that way? I, I, a deep longing to go home? That's no, not your thing. No, that's I don't my have thing. That. No. I'm like, I'm like, when my people are ready to take me, I'm ready. <laughs> the fucking Haley Bob comic comes. I'm gonna shave my head. <laughs> I'm gonna cut off my genitals, and I'm gonna wear my Nike pumps. Don't put those freaking Nike shoes on, and don't drink any freaking Kool Aid. <laughs> Hang oh on. my I'll god! I'll watch out for you. You can be home with me. I'll be fine. Uh, this is the this is my last but not least because I think this is something you know. S- Kind of, there's two things that roll into one. So one is abrupt changes in your job, mm. your relationships, your interests, and your hobbies. Like all the things that you thought were so important to you, literally do not resonate with who you are becoming, and feeling the feeling of losing your identity. So it's almost like you're like 
and this happened to me when I really started getting deep. I would like look in the mirror and I'd be like, who the fuck are you? I wouldn't even know. I would be <laughs> so like, true. who is this person that I'm becoming? Yeah. But I think the more you delve into the spiritual, the more you truly become your true self and not the three-dimensional meat, meat puppet mm. that we're all kind of you know wrangling around this three-dimensional reality. Right. You get it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of things that you've gone through in your life that you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. It does not align with who I am and where I'm going. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Well, thanks for putting in your two cents, asshole. Yeah. No, no. I oh, the, that I was, was good. Through. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why you're here, but you keep, com- keep coming a, back every uh, week. This is why I'm here, because I just had a time. It was, what do you call it? I didn't know what time it was again. <laughs> Mr. Ed Sullivan's getting the hook. What is it? The gong show in here? Like, a fucking bing. It's, it's like the Academy Awards. It really is time. when they're like, fucking wrap it up. It's time. <laughs> wrap it up. Thank you, each and every one of you, and bitches out there, for being crusaders to this ambitious movement. And like I always say, see you next Tuesday. That was great, babe.